Hello from Israel Hayom Studio. The Supreme Court last week ruled that the Tel Aviv municipality must either enforce or cancel its bylaws that keep retail stores closed in the city on Shabbat, the Jewish Sabbath. With me in the studio to discuss this are Israel Hayom editors, Simona Weinglass and Erez Lynn. I'm Steve Ganot. Now the situation is that in Israel, every municipality uh, has its own bylaws that determine whether stores uh, can stay open or be closed on Shabbat. And in Tel Aviv, the law is that stores are supposed to be closed on Shabbat. But uh, in actuality, uh, in a, the last 20 years or so, stores have remained open, many stores have remained open, and they just pay a moderate-sized fine. That's, uh, that's how, kind of how they right. get around the and law. This Supreme Court decision is a victory for the small businesses because the small businesses can't afford the fine, and also they can't afford to stay open 24-7 or to it's be open It's basically to, to give them week. fair competition. That's what the court said. It never w mentioned the Shabbat. Decision. In it. The decision. The Supreme Court decision. It, is it's not grounded on Shabbat mm -hmm. rules, not grounded on religious rules. It basically mm -hmm. said you can't have a monopoly on Shabbat for the big businesses. So the big businesses. Well, big I think it does have to do with Shabbat. I think the mm -hmm. fact that the city doesn't enforce its law gives an unfair subsidy to big business because they can afford to keep working around the clock, and small mom and pop shops can't if they want to have. But it rest. also discriminates against those who do want to work on weekends, who can't afford to work to work during the week, and basically tells them, you can't pay more, uh, mm -hmm. get more pay for your salary if you want to work extra hard. It basically discriminates those hard-working people who actually want to make more ends meet. Well, what's the, what's the situation today? You live in, in Tel Aviv. Uh, what's open? What's closed? Well, there are a lot of retail grocery stores that are open, like mm -hmm. AMPM and Tiv Tom, and mm -hmm. those are open. I think they're open 24-7, more yeah. or less. Yeah. And um, and there at the port, there are a lot of retail clothing shops open. It's just okay. like a regular day of the week. And what about cultural institutions? And cul I mean, those are those are not affected by the bylaws. Those it's a different bylaw. Anyway. Ah, so this right. bylaw, by the way, is from 1980, and it's mm -hmm. only applied in Tel Aviv. Each uh, municipality has its own bylaw, and the court actually reaffirmed that. It said, you know what? If you want to abolish this bylaw altogether and declare Shabbat another working day, you can do that. So that's a possibility. That that's might be what, one, what ends up happening, right? Yeah, more likely, though, is that we're heading into an election and we don't want to mm -hmm. miss the status quo. More likely... Who, is, who are the it's, candidates? Uh, it's going to be Ron Huldaid, the incumbent mayor, mm -hmm. who actually said he's going to keep Shabbat, uh, Shabbat another day of free business, although mm -hmm. he's going to follow the court order in some form or another. And there's Nathan Horowitz from Meretz, who while a very secular party, mm -hmm. he actually said this is a great ruling for social justice and for those who want to make sure so that this people are not the Shabbat disenfranchised. as a matter of social justice. Yeah, and I think the right. larger issue is whether we want to live in a country where stores are open on Shabbat or, or whether we want to live in a country where things are closed on Shabbat. And I think mm -hmm. stores, unless they're absolutely necessary, should be closed on Shabbat because it, it allows people a day to rest. Should it, it be from the top down, though? Maybe right. it should be it, from it, the it bottom should up. Be. It you should know. be from the top down because that's what government is for. Government enforces things that people can't do individually. I, I, don't, agree. I don't agree. Government should is it all, have a blanket prohibition against collectively? I no think, exceptions whatsoever? I think that uh, it's a wonderful thing to keep Shabbat. I keep Shabbat. I live in a, in a religious city where almost everyone keeps Shabbat. But it has to come from within. If it's, if it's done by the government, it's kind of meaningless. Well, I agree um, that there should be some room to accommodate those who cannot afford to open on Shabbat the public at large should also have the right to buy things if they need to on okay. Shabbat. Bottom, Not everything. Bottom maybe, line, hold, hold, bottom yeah. line, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, there, there's been a court ruling, now something has to change. It's very likely that things are going to find their way into some uh, compromise. Mm -hmm. Maybe the, the, st the city will find a way to subsidize small businesses or open very subsidized s businesses really? maybe or uh, decide to open small businesses in a select location mm -hmm. and to allow each community to have an option of buying something on Shabbat but not to have a far-reaching Shabbat violation going on every weekend. You know, what, do you, was, what do you think is going to happen? I was walking with some relatives down Dizengoff Street a mm -hmm. few months ago and my aunt said to me, you know, this is amazing. There's so many small stores in Tel Aviv. I, I, I'm not used to this. This is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And in America, you see that the, the centers of most large cities are all chain stores. And there's a reason. There's a correlation between these laws and the fact that chains, that um, small businesses are able to stay in business. And mm -hmm. if, if we want the character of our city to become this sort of global, nondescript, 
mega chain store city like every other city in in the Western world or many other cities in the Western world, then we should go in the direction that Holdei wants. I think you're right. But if we want to preserve the unique character of Tel Aviv, which is the first Hebrew city, then I think we mm -hmm. should try to enforce the Shabbat closing well, laws. The public that's not is the character of Tel Aviv. The character of Tel Aviv is secular and open. It's not you're not you're not maintaining the character of Tel Aviv by closing everything down on Shabbat. I think That's the public the does want Shabbat, though. Well, the public likes Shabbat, and if you ask the public, they really do like the fact that the city winds down, things are much more mellow on Shabbat. But if you ask them if they want to have the option of buying something on Shabbat, overwhelmingly they'll say, yes, we do want to have that option. So, so it's a, it's a people, paradox, isn't it? People want to have it both ways, and I think mm -hmm. there is a way of keeping... Ha finding a middle ground. That's, it's what just think, a matter that's what I think is going to be. It's, I think it's going to be a middle ground. There's got to be a way for secular people in, in Tel Aviv to, to enjoy Shabbat in a kind of a secular way. They'll, I think cultural institutions will stay open. I think they'll still be able to go to the beach, go to museums, go to uh, I agree. You know, so long as there's activities. no coercion, I think it's going to work. You know, Tel Aviv means Tel Aviv, the old and the new. And that's what it is. The mayor, the first mayor of Tel Aviv, uh, Mayor Dizengoff, said that it was a great Jewish experiment. And so I think that's what we're seeing here. You know, we don't know exactly what's going to be in the future. It's going to be some combination of Shabbat observance and the modern world. That's what Tel Aviv is supposed to be, and I think that's what it will be. Thank you.